1 Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed against all odds. This seed is going to produce against all odds. By, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which is the incorruptible seed, which lives and abides forever. Romans 4.18 in the Passion Translation. It reads, against all odds, when it looked hopeless, Abraham believed the promise and expected God to fulfill it against all odds when it was hopeless. Father, thank you. We love you, we honor you, we respect you, we love you. Father, thank you for being good. Thank you for being the answer to any, anything that we need, Lord. Thank you for already your Jehovah Jireh. That means you see ahead, you've already planned for it. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name and all God's children said amen. amen. You may be seated. As long as you have God's seed, which is God's word. Let's understand that. God's word is seed. As long as you have God's seed, you have a chance. I don't care how bleak it looks. Listen, well, I just don't understand how there's a lot of things you don't understand. Let's just be humble for a second. You could stand in front of a chalkboard, somebody that has like, like totally advanced calculus, trigonometry, all kinds of just, just, they're just math geniuses. You could stand before a chalkboard and see all this equation stuff, have no clue. The person that wrote it could come up and look at it and be like, Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Yep, I understand that completely, and you don't have a clue. But the very person that wrote all that, that, had, that, that knew what was going on, that could read it and understand it, might be the same person, listen, that could turn around and can't even look at another person in a coffee shop in the eyes and say hello because they're so socially awkward and dysfunctional. There's, they don't know how to listen. They don't know how to act around people. So all of us have things that we don't know. All of us have things we don't understand. But if you have God's word, which is God's seed, you have a chance. I said you have a chance. It might be against all odds, but you got God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you can build an ark, Noah, Without Home Depot or power tools. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Sometimes we read and we, we hear stories and we really don't sit back and just slow down and think. Against all odds. I guarantee if God told some of y'all to, to build an ark and you did have a Lowe's and Home Depot, you'd still be freaking out. It's not like he had a vast army. It's not like he could go down to Austell and, you know, get people off the shipyard and say, y'all come on over here and help me out for a minute. Against all odds, but what did he have? He had God's word. So, yes, you can build an ark, Noah, without Home Depot or power tools. You can, you can have a child by your, by your 90 year old wife when you're 100 years old, Abraham. Against all, listen, this is not just feel good stories. Sometimes we lose fact of that. This happened. Noah built the ark, it happened. Abraham had a child when he was 100 and Sarah was 90. It happened. Somebody one time when I said that, they thought they were going to be smart and said, yeah, but they lived longer back then. <laughs> hey, God's people did, but not everybody else at this time. 
Matter of fact, Abraham lived 175, Isaac 180, and I believe Jacob lived to like 137 or 38. But when Jacob, listen, when Jacob was 130 years old, he got bought before Pharaoh, and Pharaoh was just amazed and even asked, how old are you? And listen, here's what Jacob said. Well, I'm not as old as a lot of people in my family. I'm only 130. I hope I can make it as long as them. Because see, everybody in Egypt, they were dropping off about, you know, 75, 80, 85. But God's, I need some help in here. Amen. I'll preach to this front row right here. But God's people, hallelujah, I feel you. But God's people wasn't bound by the same standard of the world. Because they had, God's people had what? God's word. And so, no, that's right. Well, everybody lives long. Well, God's people did. But not everybody else. Because when they got off that boat from Noah, it went way down. Real quick. But God's people. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You can sow a seed in the middle of a famine, Isaac, and reap a hundredfold in the same year. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. The experts say you can't do it. The stock market's saying this. The economy's saying that. It's a bad time. Wouldn't advise it. Just get what you can. Can all you can get and sit on your can and just, just hold on and hunker down. Because we're the experts and we're telling you this is how it is. Yeah. But yet when you got God's word on it, he says, stay where you're at and sow seeds. Amen. And everybody else around them is looking at ground that's got cracks and crevices in it. Weeds ain't even growing. It's so much of a drought. And God says, till it, throw it in there. You got to understand, remember, seeds can keep for a while. Yeah. And that's somebody's livelihood. So you don't want to take today's seed, throw it into bad ground when maybe you could wait one more season and maybe there might be a little bit of rain. See, that's logic and reasoning, isn't it? Well, I can't, this is, my, this is life right here. This seed's life. I, we don't, I'm just saying we don't understand that these days, young people. Food does not come from Winn-Dixie or Walmart. That's not where it originates from. Or Publix. It's not where it originates from. But yet, instead of logically thinking, I better hold on to this. I'm going to need it when that rain hits. God said, sow it. Amen. And in the middle of a famine, I want to know who's in the middle of a famine in here this morning. And God's telling you to, to sow seeds. Wow. It don't look logical. But God never asked you if it looked logical or not. He's just going to tell you that it's time to sow some seeds in the middle of a famine, you don't understand. I got a harvest for you. I'm trying to get, I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something to you. And I want you to do the unthinkable in the most awkward and most uh, downtrodden time, the most un, unfavorable time. Do this. Because I told you to. No, I want you to build that ark because I want to save the world. Amen. I want you to be saved. Abraham, I want you to have the son because it's the son of promise. It's the Messiah that saves, going to save the whole eternity. It's going to come from your seed. Yeah. I'm trying to get a harvest to you, Isaac. You see where we're going with this? God's not a demanding God. Just, listen, he's God Almighty. There's nothing you can do or say that can diminish him. There's nothing you can do or say to increase him. He's doing it for you. Hallelujah. You can enter into Egypt with 70 family members, Jacob, and eventually in time, they'll leave Egypt with millions. It's against all odds. How in the world can we have a nation? We're just 70 people just kind of wandering in, setting up camp here. Look at all these millions of people around us. Whoa, we better watch our P's and Q's. 
there's just so few of us and so many of them. But what happens when you plant a seed? You, you, got, you got to give it, some, you got, it's a four-letter word. I know we don't like four-letter words. But you got to give it a four-letter word. And that four-letter word is time. Time. We're just not as big as them. We're just not as many as them. I've got a little company. I've got a little position. I'm going to a little church. I've got little hopes and dreams. What did God say? Give it time. And it can multiply. You can go in 70 and come out millions. So much so that the people that you were nervous about give it some generations and now they're saying the same thing. They're like, we got to do something about them, y'all. There's so many of them that if our enemies come in and they decide to team up with them, then we ain't got a chance. Amen and amen. You're preaching great this morning, Pastor. Keep going. You can be thrown into a pit Sold as a slave. Imagine that. You've had to think you've been betrayed in your family. Thrown into prison. From a pit to a slave to a prisoner. And in a 24 hour period, be second in command in an, in, listen, in an empire. To save the known world from famine. You can do it, Joseph. I've been abused. I've been put down. I've been... And listen, a lot of times for us, we can be like, I don't know why. Yeah, a lot of people know why. We, we know. We know why. You wouldn't listen for years. and You kept making bad decisions. You dug a deep hole and you're in it. Joseph didn't do anything. We're going to get that into in a later lesson, I believe, if the Lord allows. He didn't do anything. He can honestly say, I didn't do nothing wrong. Can you endure? Listen, can you get a word from the Lord and endure all those years? Never get bitter. Never get angry. Never be a hater. Take it from everybody. And even the ones who started it eventually to hug on their necks because you cared more about doing what God told you to do than what others did to you. Amen. Yeah, but they and they and they might have. Listen, I want to follow God and do what he told me to do. I ain't got time for to let them rent space in my head. <laughs> they didn't call me. Amen. They didn't die for me. Hallelujah. I don't worship them. I got to do what God's called me to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stay steady on it. And I'm going to, I'm going to be so focused on that that after a few years, I can look back at what you did and be like, oh, ain't no big deal. Look what God's done. I mean, who cares if at one point in time in your life you was living in a 900 square foot house that was maybe $35,000 and had a leaky roof and somebody come and stole something off your front porch. What if you decided to let that go? And as the scripture says, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. That means I'm going to repay you for what they stole. I'll give it back to you. Yes, Can God, listen, when God gives something back to you, is it a little bit more than the way it left? And instead of being bitter over what they did, I'm going to stay focused on what I'm supposed to do. And you look back at it 10 years later, and then you're living in a 3,500 square foot house. It's about $450,000, amen? Amen. And you just happen to remember that sometime that happened a long time ago. Guess what? <laughs> Don't matter now, does it? But the individual that stays bitter, where, what happened? Listen, 
It happened in 1985. Yep, and it's 2021. And even though it's 2021, guess where they're at? They're still 1985. Yeah. And if it hurt them, listen, I've been learning this too. That and, and, if you, and, if, and if you let things get to you, even at an early age, listen, you can be a 48-year-old man but get hurt bad when you were nine years old. And listen, not only as time went on and you're still staying in that same date, listen, you still have the mindset of a nine-year-old. Yes, Don't tell me. Why else would a 48-year-old man start whining and complaining like a kid that gets a toy taken from it on the playground and acts out like that? Thought you're supposed to be mature. You might be 40 years old, but your men mental capacity, you're still, you act like a nine-year-old. The actions that you're taking, the emotions that you're having, and what's coming out of your mouth is just like a nine-year-old. You never grew up. You just got older. But if you can stay on the plan, man, and despite what happened, you can go on with God. Listen, because that's your standard. But they, but they, but they, that's their standard. Let them do whatever they're going to do because they're going to do what they're going to do anyways. What's your standard? Hallelujah. We have double standards out there, don't we? Mm -hmm. I'd like to get into one right now, but I'm going to leave that alone. You can be between a vicious army and a sea with no realistic place to flee. Until the sea opens up for you to walk through, Moses, because it was against all odds. That's right. And you couldn't see a way, but God already did, and he gave you his word on it. And he said, why stand here crying at me? Go forward. I wonder how many times he's saying that to us. We're standing there. Listen, we don't read the whole verse. We go to the stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And that's true. The Lord is going to give them salvation. He's going to deliver them. And then Moses turned to, to God and said, and started talking to God. And God said, why are you crying to me? Go on and move forward. I wonder how many of us get eat up by the army because we won't move forward. We just stand still and wanting to see the salvation of the Lord. But as I said earlier, we're not sensitive to God and our hearts hard and we got too much going on in life and we don't hear him say move forward. Jesus. Why were I going to move forward? I mean, come on, God. I mean, there's a sea there. You don't know who he is, like I said earlier. You don't know him yet. Ain't nothing to him. I don't care how many millions and billions of gallons of water is between you and the other side over there. He can move it. He can move it. Against all odds. Once again, he wanted to save Joseph so Joseph could save the, the world from famine. And he wanted to, to, to get the children of Israel. Listen, he brought them out, listen, to bring them in. Oh, I think that's a whole message in itself, but I want to stay here for just a second. Why can we get on our knees, beg, cry, and plead for God to bring us out? And then we get so complacent and stand still and don't want to do nothing, not realizing that the reason I brought you out is not just to leave you here. You're out, but you're not in yet. I brought you out to take you in. Why are you standing here? Why are you crying unto me? You're coming against his character. He's a big God and he can handle it, but he don't like it when you come against his character because he's already proven himself again and again and again and again. I know how he feels. He's just like me. You, you can say I'm the worst preacher you've ever sit under. I don't know a thing that I need to go back to Bible school. I need to learn something. That I'm a joke. And I, that, no problem. 
But you come up to me and say, I think you're a thief and you're embezzling church funds, I'll get hot because you come against my character. You can come against my calling, and that's just subject to opinion. I might be the worst preacher you've ever heard. I don't know. You might have been under some amazing people over the years. I don't know. No problem. But you come against my character. I, that, that, I'm working on that, okay? I, I, get, I get hot when you come against my character of why. But even in this, God's trying to deliver God wants to bring you out so he can bring you in. We, we just focus on, I'm out. And we wait a few years and a few more years and a few more years. I thought there was supposed to be a promised land. Yeah. You got to go into it. <laughs> that sounds a whole lot like not being planted, doesn't it? But even against all odds, the Lord brought you out, listen, to bring you in because his word will not return. Void. Amen. You can march around a fortified and impenetrable wall seven times and it collapsed, Joshua. That's against all odds. Are you kidding me? Cannons aren't invented yet. <laughs> that wall at Jericho was so thick, uh, just from history, you could set two chariots on top of it. It was so thick you could set two chariots wide and have chariot race around the whole thing. That's how thick it was. So it's a joke to think you can go up to that thing with your spear and kind of tap on it. <laughs> Be better luck digging a hole through that. Uh, you'd have a better chance of digging out of Alcatraz and trying to get through that thing. Against all odds. What do you want me to do? March around it six times. And then do it the seventh. And it failed. It was against all odds. But he wanted to give them what, listen, his word will not return void. This land I'm going to give unto you. Go get it. Well, we can't get past them. <laughs> you got me. And God says, just do what I said. Hallelujah. You can take on a thousand soldiers by yourself. That's impressive. And win hands down. It's not even close with only the jawbone of a donkey, Samson. I can't do it, Lord. There's just too many of them. I got too many enemies. I've not got an M16. I don't have grenade launchers. Matter of fact, I ain't got nothing. Lord says, there's a bone right over there. Grab it. That's all you need. And take them all out. Take them out. Against all odds. Why? Because I want you to be delivered from your enemies. I hope somebody's getting something out of this besides me. I've already, I've been happy. I've pre preached myself happy five minutes ago. You can lose everything you have where you're at. Everything that you ever had where you were born and raised, Ruth, you could lose it all. Yet you could move to a foreign land and find more prosperity and joy than you could have ever imagined where you were at. I lost it all. Is he not able to do much more than this? What word did he give you? What word did he give you? Glory be to God. Everything can be restored. Exceedingly and abundantly, even above all that we can ask or think. 
Against all odds, she was supposed to be another statistic. A statistic. She's supposed to be one of those old ladies widowed in a corner, gropping, complaining and about how bad things were and how bad things went and how it was so unfair and that she didn't deserve that. And life just give her lemons. Just bitter and mean. But yet she didn't stay where she was at. Against all odds, she moved out. And she went back to the word and praise. That's the land that she went to. That's what it's called. The word and praise. Bethlehem, Judah. That's where she went. Sound familiar? Sound like something that I said maybe about 45 minutes ago? Huh? I lost everything here. And God's trying to get you to come to the word and to the praise. Bethlehem meaning bread. Bread is a figurative language for the word. Judah means praise. I'm trying to get you to the word and praise. You can, you can leave the land of nothing, the land of the curse, and you can move into, but you got to move. you got to be planted. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can be unwanted by your family. I mean, all of them. Not just your biggest brother picks on you. I'm talking about all of them don't like you. I mean, listen, they don't like you. It's not that they ignore you. They don't like you. You have to stay in that. You're raised. Listen, you're raised in a place where everybody, because when you're a kid, well, we're getting into this in just a minute, you, you, you have no control over that. So here you are in a place where nobody likes you. You can be unwanted by your family, but chosen by God, David. And be a mighty conqueror and a ruler over everybody in that land. See, you're just wanting a respect in the house. And God said, if you'll just follow me, I'll give you respect in the whole country. But you're a little thinking. You're living in the little house. Because you really don't believe it against all odds. Could it be true? Did he really mean what he said? Can I really be planted? Can I really move forward? Glory be to God. Believe for buses. Instead of just another van, believe for buses. Have such the program that I'm, I'm talking, all of them want to come here. All the youth. It'll get out. It'll get out. Hallelujah. Think about franchising. If you can do it better than anybody else, put it on paper. Market it. Hallelujah. Believe. Against all odds. A man in a home. How about a man who's got a real nice home? Amen. Amen. Put your name, he'll put your name on the title deed too. How about that? It's your home too. Amen. Yeah. Against all odds. Why do we think so small when God wants to do things so big? Amen. We got a man in this room right now that when this budget thing for um, infrastructure falls, goes through, I'm believing it's going to get millions from it. Amen. Not everything is bad. From the government. Yeah. I'm believing somebody's going to be getting millions. Yeah. I'm preaching this morning. Hallelujah, I'm preaching. God's word is full from Genesis to Revelation of average, ordinary people. See, you don't realize just how much you're just like them. 
they, 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 didn't, they did, were not born and raised into greatness. They decided to follow God against all odds. They're just like ordinary, average people that did extraordinary exploits against all odds because they had God's word on it. They moved in that direction. Some of them, it took more time than others, didn't it? Some of them had help, some of them didn't. But they did great exploits because God was with them. God's word will manifest whatever it says. Romans 4, 17. Throw it on the screen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God. Listen, who quickens, that means makes alive. Quickens that it's dead though, pastor. Well, he is the resurrection and life. He makes things that are dead come back to life. What's dead in your emotions that he could bring back to life? What's dead in, in, in your relationships that you think there's just no way, there's just no way that you put him in the middle of it? What's dead in your body that he can make come alive again? He is the resurrection who quickens the dead and calls things that which be not as though they were. Why you keep calling things that are not as though it's not? Notice it didn't say that he calls things that be not as though they were. He Listen, he didn't call things that are as though they're not. Let me explain that real quick. It's not mental. It's not a mental game. For instance, if you walk into to your employment and you have a little bit of a cough, your eyes are watering and you have a runny nose and your nose is a little red and you walk in. Listen, this is where we miss it in some kind of charismatic, Pentecostal, holiness, whatever you want to call it, circles. Hey, you look sick this morning. Here's what you don't do. No, I don't. And you just ignore it. In other words, it's pretty evident you're, something's going on. <laughs> Amen. You don't call, it as, you don't call things that, that are as though they're not. That's just mind games. You call things that be not as though they were. You're not, listen, you're not the sick trying to get healed. You're the healed fighting off sickness. You don't ignore the fact that everybody else knows you're, you got snot running everywhere. This ain't normal. You're fighting something. The difference is, is they want you to take, a, they want you to give it permission to be in your body and listen and say, don't ever say this, I'm sick. Well, you look sick this morning. Yeah, I am. Quit praying to God about it. God is like, I can't do nothing about it. You've already given it permission. I mean, you have authority over you. Yeah, but you're God. You can do anything. No, not really, because I'd had you do all kinds of stuff already in your life, but you wouldn't listen to me. I can't make you do it. I gave you free choice. What have you done with it? You've given it permission to stay. You just took it. But you don't say that nothing's going on. That's crazy. He calls things that be not as though they were. It don't look like that. The report sure enough said. James, I'm sure you got plenty enough reports in your condition, didn't you? <laughs> but God. Why? Because he called things that be not as though they were. That's what he does. And that's what you got to do. you got to partner with him. God's word does not expire nor lose any potency over time. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Matter of fact, I'm going to put these on the screen. I'm just going to be real quick because i got somewhere to go and I don't have much time to get there. Matthew 24, 35. 
Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Incorruptible. Psalms 119.89. It says, forever. How long? Forever. forever. That's a mighty long time. Forever, O Lord, thy word. Whose word? God's word. Is settled. No debating it. No if, ands, buts, ors. Your word is settled in heaven. God's word stands firm in heaven. And he's fully persuaded by what he said. But are you? God's word doesn't operate any, I'm going to take every excuse that you might have thought that you had. Amen. I'm going to strip it out from under you right here. God's word doesn't operate any different in heaven than it does on earth. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on, in earth as it is in Oh, gosh, I could get into some deep stuff right there. God's word doesn't have any more power in heaven than it does on earth. The difference, or you could say the variable, is not God or his word. It's those to whom it's spoken to. Why does it work perfectly in heaven? Because when he announces it in heaven, everybody says, yes, sir, so be it. And then he has a prophet of God to come and announce it on earth. Proclaim the same thing. And now you got a mixed crowd. I don't know about that. And then some will be like, that's the craziest thing I ever heard. That's just crazy. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Same word. It all has to do with who hears it. Because it's settled in heaven. But it sure isn't settled in earth yet. But it will be. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We learned in our last message series that the vast benefit of believing God, listen, even in the midst of adversity and even how adversity can make a way for opportunity. Remember that? Maybe you don't, but it's available to you. It's free. It's up to you. Amen. Just like anybody can get a Bible, but you've got to read it. What makes one and breaks one? Hmm. Why does one develop character while the other inherits calamity? Is this an opportunity to overcome or to be overwhelmed? What causes some to fight and others to flight? What causes some to give in while others push in? Why will some let go while others hang on? Why does one only do the minimal on the clock? Just enough to stay employed and receive an entry-level check. While the other comes in early, stays late, asks questions, shadows senior staff, reads books on their vocation, takes night classes, and moves up from entry-level to mid-management in only two years. The answer is one's determination 
and diligent, diligence to believe God no matter what. Even against all odds. And they deal with resistance. They solve problems and build a better tomorrow. Here we go. If you want it bad enough, you will find a way. If you don't, you will find an excuse. That's why, listen, don't make me into your last pastor. Don't make me into your TV preacher. I am myself. I am an individual. And when you come out here, you get me, but you get me consistently. <laughs> Here's what I can't stand. It irks me. It irks me watching people engaged in a task and some are working hard while the others are just being absolute lazy and want to sit around and jaw and do nothing. I can't, it, it, it irks me. Laziness irks me. That's how I'm geared. Roll up your sleeves and get to work. I don't have as much empathy and sympathy. I, that's just me. You can go somewhere where they do. They'll cuddle, maybe cradle you. Good luck at trying to get them every day of the week and call them three times a day. Good luck. What are you doing? It's no time to sit in the corner and have a pity party. You're, you're talking to me all about your past. You're not mentioning anything to me about your future. So you're not somebody that's going to have a, re you're not going to be a return on an investment. I ain't got time for you. Because they're over here busting it. They're getting it. I don't know about all that. How about this? Draw nine to me, then I'll draw nine to you. How about if you don't work, you don't need to eat? What if it says that praising God steals the enemy and an avenger in your life? God's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. Amen. So we like to have our so closet full of excuses and reasons why. And God's word will obliviate all of them because it's God's word. You just don't believe. Just at least be honest. and just, I don't believe any of it. All right. You can make a way where there's no way. I could have went on and on with the biblical stories earlier. Again after again you're not supposed to survive a furnace seven times hotter than normal. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You're not supposed to make it overnight in a lion's den, Daniel. Hallelujah. You're not supposed to be one of the great apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, Peter. You're an uneducated fisherman. You're a loud mouthed, rude, obnoxious, cussing fisherman. You're not supposed to be that. Amen. Glory be to God. If you want it bad enough, you'll find a way. If you don't, you'll find an excuse. You can receive the rewards of resistance or be a victim of your environment. I'm going to end with this. You may not have chosen your childhood. I told you I was getting here. You didn't choose it. In other words, you had no control over who begot you. Zero. You didn't have any choice about who raised you. Matter of fact, you might have been raised by somebody other than who birthed you. You didn't have any control on how they raised you. 
You could have been raised in a Catholic home, a Jewish home, an agnostic home, a Satanist home, an atheist home. I don't know. You don't have any control how they raised you. Or listen, or where they raised you. You could have seen nothing but concrete all your life or you could have been raised in the woods. You don't have any control over all that. So you may not have chosen your childhood <laughs> and you may not have had any advantages or head starts, but you can choose your adulthood. Even if it's against all odds. Because the statistics say you're supposed to be an inbred and sleeping with your sister just like everybody else in the trailer park. But you can choose your adulthood. You might not have had a good start. You can all by yourself decide to believe God with all your heart, your soul, your mind. You see, that's what I'm saying. God, ooh, I'm almost mad at this because I'm mad because it's a righteous anger. It doesn't matter if you didn't get anything you're supposed to get when you were growing up. Get a hold of this. That's all you need. It will give you what you didn't. This can change. Say, well, you can't do better until you know better. Right? Exactly, I get it. Well, because of the, I'm a product of my environment, I didn't even know, I didn't even know how to balance a checkbook. I mean, I've never been taught anything in life. This, this could give you wisdom. This could give you direction. This will give you answers. Hallelujah. Because when you give your life to him, Your life is in Him. You are in Christ. He knows how to get you from point A to point B. You can all by yourself decide to believe God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and let the grand architect build you a better tomorrow, even against all odds. You didn't have a mother and father. You were raised on the wrong side of the tracks. You didn't really even get an education. You were so honorary, they want to just push you through school. You, 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 might, you, know, you might be 16 years old, but you have the mental capacity of a second grader. You just learn to hustle and learn how to make it on the streets. And you learn how to survive. And statistics would say, but this word will say, <laughs> It doesn't matter how you got started. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and say that to a degree, you got to work a little harder than somebody who had something handed to them. I'm not a fan of that either, amen? I love it when I see people that have went on to make success in their life. I love it when they make their kids start out in the mail room just like anybody else. I love it. Trying to shape them and mold them and give them character instead of just handing them something. Oh, yeah? Okay, parents, tell you what. You make them buy the $150 Nike shoes and see if they let mud and dirt get on them as much. See if they take better care of them. I need a new pair. I want a new Jordan. All right, well, save for it and get it. What do you mean save for it and get it? <laughs> Save for it and get it. I didn't stutter. I guarantee you they last a lot longer. Hallelujah. To ensure a better tomorrow. Go ahead and stand to your feet. I will end on this. But don't zone out on me. Stretch for a second, but then tune in, okay? To ensure a better tomorrow. Effort will be essential. Overcoming is not optional. P 
pain will be persistent, but the rewards will be refreshing. Your perspective on today's situation has everything to do with tomorrow's destination. And we may get into this next week, I'm not sure, but your attitude will determine your altitude. Even if it's against all odds.